Magnus Carlsen didn't win uh, the recent tournament, but he did play well and he did show some of the skills that have made him maybe the best player in the world. And today we're going to try and deconstruct what Carlsen does so well and has made him number one in the world. And before we get on with the game from the uh, tie break um, against Ding Liren, uh, remember to subscribe. Thank you. Um, that's what we're here for. And uh, let's go and get on with it. He's white against Ding Liren. It was the Go Money Asian Rabbit. And it was, of course, played online. And when it's, uh, but Asian Rabbit just meant that it started earlier because they have a different time format. Uh, and Carlson, he went out in the semifinals against Aronian. And um, that was a surprise. Aronian seems to have gotten some momentum after switching federation to the US, leaving a whole country, Armenia, uh, in, in a sorrow state. Uh, they must be very sad that he, he went, even though his heart will, of course, remain Armenian. Anyway, that's not what we're about to look at. We are looking at the tiebreak, the sudden death, uh, the Armageddon games. Um, no, it was not Armageddon. It was just the, the tiebreak. Okay. And Ding Liren, he plays uh, E4, E5. He likes that. Uh, this is what most top players uh, nowadays prefer. That, the Karakan or the Sicilian Knight of and Castle. And this is the mainline Spanish opening or Rai Lopez, as they say in English speaking countries. And uh, as you can hear, Denmark is not one of those. It's, I think it's meant, uh, it was named after the priest Rai Lopez, like in 1500 something. And here, the main move is uh, Rook E1. Um, which is uh, it's an elegant way of uh, covering e4, but uh, recently or in the, in the last 10 years, d3 has gotten some momentum as not a bad move at all. And, um, and they went on to play some, some theoretical line here, c3, castle, and by the way, c3 is, is not, uh, it's not the, the, the way they used to play. They used to play a3. Uh, and and put the knight on c3 where it it's where they had some uh, ideas with knight c3 knight b5 knight d5 but black found a way to neutralize that sort of and uh, went back to this setup with a4 which exploits that the the b pawn is um, is gone, gone a little ahead of the the herd uh, in in this position white's setup is is very harmonious and so is black's he does have a slightly uh, passive bishop on e7. And at the moment, white is threatening d b5. Uh, black could play b4, but it doesn't feel right to, to go ahead with b4. So bishop d7 is supposed to be uh, the best move for black here. And here white plays a very subtle move. Uh, the idea is, is, is pretty obvious, actually. Bishop c2. And uh, the idea is that if he goes with some normal moves, uh, black would play knight a5 and c5. But after bishop c2, knight a5 makes no sense. Uh, first of all, white can just play b4 and preventing c5 uh, or putting the knight on a bad square on b7. But he can also play d4. So knight a5 makes no sense after bishop c2, uh, which is sort of preventing uh, the knight from moving from this square. I'll make that knight uh, red, by the way. And this knight is the problem for black in the Rai Lopez because it's blocking the pawn on c7 and making uh, black's position slightly um, less harmonious. So when black, usually when he's uh, solved that problem, he's more or less equal. Okay, this is normal chess, rook e8. Uh, the maneuver rook e8 and bishop f8 and g6 and so on and bishop d7 is very common in uh, the Rai Lopez because the position is rather closed so both sides have time to deploy their pieces the way they like. Rook e1, one of black's main ideas is to go uh, d5 and so it makes sense to put the rook here also 
white makes room for this maneuver and having the knight on g3 and f3 is supposed to be uh, well more or less uh, the ideal setup for white uh, because you you're ready to jump at the king whenever the chance uh, comes this position is they're playing on both sides at the moment uh, both uh, players h6 that's maybe not really necessary uh, i don't i'm not sure i like this move h6 um there is no pressure on f7 and and the pin is not a problem h3 this is also uh, rather normal moves um preventing a pin maybe white is getting ready for this uh, without allowing this bishop d4 pressurizing d4 rook b8 little bit passive getting out of the file and black is finally ready to do maybe something like this and put the knight on this square uh, and white decides to take a step at the queen side before um, the idea behind this move is to control this grand center but also to control uh, this square um, and making this move possible it also prevents b4 from black so no more b4 97 is also um, rather okay oops take take and d4 and uh, black plays uh, the knight here and i think this position is more or less equal n n both sides are very solid uh, there is some sort of a stand up in the center but it's it looks very natural uh, both sides playing this way uh, knight here the idea is, is of course it might go here and um and uh, i don't think i don't think you can say that white has won the opening battle at all in this position but uh, that's not what we are about here rook a8 okay let's fight about the open file very natural move bishop d2 just connecting the rooks it's not that it's got some any big strategic thing i think carlson probably liked that after something like this and this and this this pawn is protected by this bishop uh, this is something very typical carlson that he and and in in general uh, positional and strategic players they like these kind of things that preventing the opponent's play um queen here um queen c8 white black might have some ideas over here and he did manage to get these two knights to the king side so if he can take that and get a knight to g4 and h4 it will be a mating attack so black white immediately starts um uh, countering this and um and in this position i think black had a good chance to equalize completely with d5 this is uh, the perfect moment for that move. Um, if you take, you can go e4, and the bishop will come out to d6. The king is slightly awkward placed on h2. So d5 here looks like a good move. Uh, this is is also kind of natural. The the white king is in in the queen is in the corner, and and black has good pieces in general no, there's no big threats anywhere so d5 here and black is fine for sure instead uh, ding Liren goes for an attack knight is five there is uh, this square and uh, this is a good uh, moment to take stock of what's going on here uh, black's plan is, is is obviously to go knight to f4 and bishop takes h3 starting a serious attack uh, what to do about that? Well, for for I think for most grandmasters the 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 answer would be obvious uh, that there are there can only be one way to counter this uh, this way of playing, and um, and of course Carlsen does that bishop d3, and uh, the bishop although it's it's kind of nice on on this diagonal and on this diagonal, it is in general a rather strong piece and the way black has set it all up to attack a3 it makes a ton of sense to go to f1 um, and there is a sort of um, an 
and it's sort of a wisdom from uh, from Asian vision that that at night here is not dangerous if you have a bishop here. I'll make that red. So this is is, is in general a good thing. Uh, and the nice thing about it is that whenever uh, white is, is is feeling for it, he can probably just go back with the knight and play g3 and expel that knight. And often it has a clumsy way back to to uh, its camp while white is, is, is just fine here. Um, I'm, I do, do this a lot. c6. And, um, and this seems a little bit like something is going wrong for, for black here. Because after this, takes a good moment to take he cannot take with the knight because the knight is hanging on f4 so he has to take with the pawn and in general these two knights are not very um they're they're sort of uh, protecting each other making them not very uh, strong actually it's it's in general it's two knights that are protecting each other is not the optimal optimal uh, way they were much better when they were beside each other here they're controlling a lot of squares Bishop here, and we see that uh, that this structure here has uh, has left back with a hole on c5, and uh, maybe even d6. So um, bishop e6, all natural, knight c5, jumping at the hole, and um, and and black takes, and here white could take with the pawn with the bishop, and and would have a slight edge, uh, but Carlsen takes with the pawn, and that says a little bit about him, because that makes him uh, his, his sort of his structure more uh, dangerous. Because now he gets a real outpost here, and a rook there will will be annoying. But if you take it, it will be, for instance, with the rook, it will be turned into a pass pawn, a far away, a far advanced pass pawn. So this is a little bit annoying for black, and black uh, keeps playing way too passively here, um, which is something they tend to do against Carlsen. They sort of uh, because black's position is, is is strategically already suspect. So he, he he should really do something. And Carlsen he just improves the position of his pieces, and uh, already here uh, it's 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 a very Annoying for black. White will will simply uh, at some point he will just expel the knight from from h5 with g3 at at the exact uh, correct moment. At the moment he might even be threatening to go g3 because if knight takes rook takes e6, and uh, and you get two uh, two light pieces for a rook, which is in general uh, a good uh, exchange for you. So Ding Liren senses that okay this is really actually going badly so i will try and make some counter play and uh, and carson is of course ready for this uh, we see that he realized ah and you can't take with the knight that was that was bad right so and take here and here in this position queen b1 would probably have been even stronger than what uh, Carson played, but it's still very strong. And we see that the white squares are now a serious concern. And even though black tried all these moves to uh, to sort of get out of danger, he's, he's still in, in some sort of trouble here. And at the moment, uh, white is, is simply threatening to take this one. And uh, and that would be, and, and then this fellow down here would, would, would join the attack. And, and, and there is no attack on the king side. Uh, which so, and here is is black to white to move. What to do here? There is probably many good moves, um, and but Carlsen managed to find a, a very easy way to win, more or less. Saying okay, where are the problems for black? Where is the weakness? Uh, what are um, where, where can I put in my attack? And he found this move. And these kind of subtle uh, maneuvering, of course, it makes a ton of sense uh, to just go here. Um, and d6. And here he finds another little nice move. He could take, uh, but he just plays queen c1, saying, okay. And, and this is very typical for the way Carson wins, that. 
he's not gonna exchange this this guy here this is a bad bishop this is a tactical weakness this is the the guy that will lose black the game so we'll just keep him there uh, because there's no good squares for it and and even though uh, it's it's white square the white squares are very weak and and when this uh, friendly guy here uh, enters the game black will simply be finished um, and it's already very bad uh, you see you can't you the, the pawn is, is is lost you can't take uh, if you take back i would just take with the queen and everything is falling apart so here and how to go on from here well it's not so difficult um of course king g7 f6 is, is, is even covered so the queen will, will go in faster rook g8 of course this was a rabbit game so it's understandable black could already resign um, um, but uh, it's also noteworthy that carlson doesn't uh, stop just to say okay uh, he keeps keeps the attack going attacking the knight pushing more pressure on here and getting ready for um, the other knight to join the game here again attacking here and after this move it's all over f6 king h8 and bishop d3 what a nice finish to a game so what happened here well what what did the ding Liren do that deserved to end up in a position like this there was a slight uh, maybe uh, he, he didn't find the right moment to play d5 uh, he allowed he played a little bit too passively and then went became too active when he got could feel that he got squeezed and then carlson just wins effortlessly and, and not many people can win against a guy like Ding Lear. In this rating list, Ding Lear is 2799. So he's a 2800 player. And he just got pushed back. And, and, and then put Genji to sleep with the nice little maneuvers. Um, especially notice um, especially notice this ma maneuver here, um, which and and um, followed by bishop f1 and and already here black is is clearly worse because white has a clear advantage in the center and on the queen side and the king side well nothing's gonna happen there and that's the problem the king side attack is not materializing and that's sort of the strategic risk that black runs in in these kind of positions that if you if you go for a king side attack it better succeed because uh, you're going to lose uh, if it doesn't okay this was uh, gm talks i hope you enjoyed this episode with the little bit of magnus carlsen magic uh, thank you for watching